Welcome, Representative Townsend. You are here to introduce a bill to us today. So please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. And, and for the record, I am Representative uh, Meta Townsend from South Burlington, uh, here to introduce House Bill 79. And the, uh, the purpose of the bill relates to um, relates to uh, licensing of personnel in uh, public and elementary secondary schools here in Vermont and a, a proposed requirement to have completed at least at least one three credit course in African American history e for either uh, initially attaining one's license to teach or to renew. Uh, this proposal uh, was brought to me by one of my constituents, a fellow retired teacher. For the record, I am a retired teacher myself. Um, and the constituent who brought it forward uh, did spend years teaching at South Burlington High School. And during that time, himself taught African-American history as part of the curriculum there. Um, this bill is not new to the legislative arena. Um, this very language has been brought forward before. Um, at least since uh, 2009. That's as far back as I checked, but in, it, it uh, has not been able to uh, gain any traction. And I'm hoping that at a minimum, the bill might serve in this iteration as a catalyst for a deep conversation. Um, in my mind, it can serve two functions as it's, as it's written in its introductory form. It can provide support for school personnel, giving them factual information, uh, a body of factual information upon which they can fall back, a, a foundation of, of the history. Um, Granted, it's like a toe in the ocean. One three credit course cannot cover everything there is to cover, but it can cover a lot more than is currently covered in general history courses uh, regarding American history, which I must say generally comes through a particular lens, um, which does not uh, lend itself to inclusivity of many marginalized populations. Um, a second, purpose that I think the bill can serve is to also in, in its own small way, help to remedy, uh, seek to remedy, move toward a remedy of the implicit bias and the outright racism, um, which I believe we have to accept is part of our culture today in the United States. Um, at this point in time, if you will, thanks to technology, iPhones, cameras, the rest of it, we can all see with our own eyes uh, behaviors which have undoubtedly, in my mind, been going on for decades, um, but still going on today in terms of grievous, grievous behaviors toward uh, one another, as evidenced in particular by um, the violence of this past summer. Uh, with regard to uh, African-American persons within our population in the United States. So um, why look to the schools? Well, I can certainly uh, testify to the fact as a retired teacher that um, schools are looked to essentially solve all the problems in our, in our society. It, it has not changed over the years. People turn to the schools, and that's that's to be under uh, uh, that, that that's to be understood. It's not surprising to me. Um, the youngsters bring with them the, our students bring with them to the schools the lives they live, the lives they observe of others. They have concerns that they feel deeply. Uh, on many subjects. And those issues are not left at the schoolhouse door. 
nor at any particular classroom door, nor can they be separated from the wholeness that is each and every student. And so um, I know myself as, as a retired teacher, I would have welcomed, I suppose I could have chosen to, but I, I did not, I confess that. Uh, I would have welcomed having more concrete information, which I did seek in other ways, but it, it, it wasn't as uh, organized and uh, focused as it would be in, in, um, in a classroom setting. By, by that, I mean, for instance, a trip to Alabama, Birmingham, visiting the uh, Civil Rights Museum there in right across the street from the Baptist Church, which was bombed where the children were killed at Sunday school. Things like that were what I uh, tried to do myself to further uh, ground my, my knowledge base in addition to, frankly, having been of an age to have lived through uh, the 60s when I was old enough to appreciate what I was seeing. Um, so let, let me stop there. Um, and, and if people have questions, um, I'm here. So one of the things that, that comes to mind when I, when I hear this is um, our 2019 Act One, mm -hmm. the Ethnic Studies uh, bill that created the work group and their design was to look at issues such as this. They have a report coming to us. I haven't scheduled that yet um, in terms of their recommendations, but do you know if your, your constituent had an opportunity to, to speak with the, with the work group, the ethnic studies work group? I do not know. Okay. I do not know. I know that he reached out to the um, executive director of, for uh, uh, racial equity, mm -hmm. uh, Susanna Davis, but I, I do not know with yeah. regard to your specific question. Okay. Uh, I should I should mention, by the way, that he, uh, my constituent, and I also, in the context of this bill, w want to encourage a a broader uh, discussion. The whole matter of indigenous indigenous peoples, uh, people of color of whatever ethnic background. In addition to African American, this 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 bill could be, as as I said at the outset, a catalyst for a deeper discussion, along with this this report that is indeed expected. So yeah, so looking at the statutes as well as teacher preparation, right? Okay, thank you um, very much. Are there any? Oh my goodness, I see a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> um, Representative Conlon. Thank you. Good, uh, good morning. Um, good morning. Just curious to know, it, it talks about teachers um, would have to have this to renew their license. How often does a teacher have to renew his or her license? It, it, well, I retired in 2008, so I haven't renewed my license recently, but before I retired, it was every seven years, I believe. Okay, yeah. so, uh, so this would, okay. And um, I guess, is there any thought as to who pays for this course? For a teacher well, who wants to renew their license, in, in uh, unless something has changed dramatically in most, if not all, school districts through contractual language, there there is support for um, professional development um, coursework, and this could be one of those. Thank you, Representative Williams. Yes, could you tell us what the biggest roadblock you have run into in getting this passed through the last 12 years? Well, I've been in the legislature only since 2013. So I wasn't involved earlier on, but uh, I, I honestly don't know what the roadblocks were. Um, traction simply could not be engendered. My constituent told me how he had tried in many different ways to even get a hearing of any kind on the bill. And the door was not open. And he went to the licensing board. 
because a lot of this could be dealt with directly right at the licensing. Well, yeah. I, he went to the legislature okay. in, in the context of this bill. This, th this very language was introduced in 2009. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Representative Toof. Thank you. I, uh, oh, something popped up. Sorry. Um, Peter actually asked my question. Um, I will actually, I will take this time on the floor to uh, just give a pitch to our Vermont State Colleges. I got a, my degree in history and I do want to say that my um, Professor Spiro, who is now the, uh, the, is he the president of Castleton? He was my U.S. history teacher or professor at Castleton and, and we did do an extensive um, uh, studies on African American st uh, history, and uh, so I would just say, that from my experiences, that that is something that could be reassuring to to people that are interested in this bill. Um, but I do, um, I, I, my questions were the uh, licensing questions. Thank you. Yeah. So, so we can certainly talk to the licensing folks. Um, Representative Austin. Yep. Um, I just want to echo uh, again. Uh, Chair Webb's, um, you know, just pointing out that this uh, Vermont Coalition for Ethnic and Social Equity Studies in School, you know, will be presenting mm -hmm. um, a report really very soon to the legislature and I think our committee. And I would be shocked if your constituents' concerns were not addressed in the recommendations of that mm -hmm. report. So, um, you, you know, he might want to give a call or she might want to give a call to Amanda Garces, you know, who is, um, you know, one of the main um, advocates for this report and just find out what, what they found because they looked at uh, schools and looked at all minorities. I mean, looked at all disenfranchised and marginalized uh, groups in Vermont. So it, it might address your concerns and your constituents' concerns as well. I certainly hope that uh, the report will. And if perchance it doesn't, the bill is still here. Right. Um, Representative James. Thank you. Um, the, the draft of the report um, is floating around. So I, oh. I know we haven't taken testimony on it yet. Right. Um, but it was submitted to the legislature on the 4th of January. And I unfortunately also have not had a chance to, I just opened it up to see how far I'd gotten and my little yellow highlights stop on page three. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I can certainly find the link and drop that in our chat oh. or. No need for, for me. I'm well acquainted with going through the reports. I know right where to go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the offer, though. Yeah, I remember I where I found it? I, I think it was sent out to all the members of the Social Equity Caucus um, prior to our summit on Saturday. Yeah, and we're going to need to let uh, Representative Townsend go back to her committee very soon here. But yeah. um, I, I see Representative Hooper. Uh, Representative Townsend, thank you so much for for your persistence on this particular bill. Um, this question actually is for the chair. When might we see Amanda? When might she come in to tell us what's going on? It's just a matter of getting it scheduled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, you know, we really ought to just call it American history, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Jesse, maybe um, you could reach out to Amanda Garces and we could get her on the schedule. I think that, that with this bill presentation, it's a good idea to get that going. I'll put it on my list. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm assuming so. Uh, Representative Williamson Hooper, those those are old hands that are up, so to speak. And here's Robin. Thank you so much. Um, there. <laughs> we're going to move on to our next topic. Awesome. Um, well, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you I'm so going much. To I'm going to dance out and another member of appropriations is dancing in. She just danced in, <laughs> yeah. You met in the door. <laughs> Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.